Um, this is the second half now against Manhattan, um, and right off the bat is another good example of us um, working the ball into wide position, cutting across the field and looking to play that diagonal ball. This time it's Billy receiving the ball. Good turn by Ethan here to play, and Jackson in between the lines, which is great, right? While the ball's quickly um, passed up field, players are in good positions, and as we work the ball here, we look, you know, the player is attacking us, or the defender is stepping up to, to you know, provide pressure, and now this is what happens. You need a player to play short to when this happens. When we break pressure and we, we're going at the back four, we need a player to play to feet. Jack does a good job of, of doing that, and Billy, and exactly, here, here we have the same exact play we've seen, you know, several times now. Our players are receiving, our wide players receiving the ball to the inside, and we got a player running, you know, on the outside, our outside back overlapping. All that is needed here. I mean, it's it's on for us. All that, and he does try to play this ball into space. Is that all it needs is just to find it, you know, in front of Jack instead of behind him. It's also on here for Daniel. Okay, and I think this is Ethan to attack the weak side. But you notice the pattern. There's four players basically on this, you know, third of the field, this half of the field on the outside. Player goes, the ball gets into the player's feet. We got players running off of it. You know, Jack decides to to run in the space instead of Yassine. If this happens, right, Yassine could peel off into Jack's space and of maintaining some kind some some shape here. Um, and Jack is the one now running through it late. They happen to block it, unfortunately. Right, it's the right type of ball. It just needs to be hit into space as opposed to right where Jack is. Because so I think this would have hit Jack in the back too. Right, it would have been a tough ball for Jack to hit this ball to get this pass. Uh, but I was calling for Daniel, but Daniel's kind of, you know, as you rewind this, it's right around here. He's raising his hand as, a, as opposed to just running. Um, I think it's difficult. I think you get you got to do both, right? If you need you want the ball in the air, usually you raise your hand up to ask for it. Um, but you got to be streaking, kind of flashing into a space and yelling for the ball as you're as you're doing that, so they can see you. Right, all three of those things will help. I think, you know, Billy sees the most immediate thing, which is fine. But again, if Jack is the one, you know, breaking the diamond, which naturally he would be in this position, um, is running through, then Yassin can obviously work into this space, or we can work the ball across the field through the other attacking midfielder. But you can see the pattern here that we have. We have good spacing. They are committing one, two, three, four. We got four players here. These guys are recovering, but the weak side players, it's one v one, right? And a ball, a better little, a better ball here into space would have got Jack in. Either a, and if Jack hadn't gone, we could have played defeat to Tyler to or played across the field to Ethan or Daniel. So just recognizing this this play is on for us constantly. Um, and the pat the, the pattern is, is is something we do often. Again, we pick up the pieces, and we're looking to play a diagonal ball here as well. And it's slightly, you know, as Billy has his ball. You know, he probably could have played slightly in front, more in front of him, because for me, the ball should be played in here, but it would have landed. It actually, you know, got pretty close to where I would want it, but it's, the pace isn't right, so Daniel has to kind of slow down. But improvisation here is good. He he realizes Yassine is working off of him, right? Which is what we want, right? Players are reacting. Yassine isn't just watching the ball go and leaving Daniel. He's he recognizes that he could be a support. Okay, ball goes in. He, he goes, oh, I can go underneath it, and he gets a decent shot. It gets blocked. Decent shot on goal. Cam here just needs a slightly better service. I think this, if this ball is to the back post, or if Jack, rec Jack recognizes, you know, there's 3v2 back here. There's three of our players to two of their players. Um, and I think a better service here from Cam, they're asking for it. We have a goal. It's actually not a bad ball because it's in a dangerous area. Jack just doesn't recognize. He thinks he's by himself, right? He's not looking to see that number 10 or number 18, whatever number that is, is going to win this ball. And actually, we have the numbers to win it, but no one is actively trying to get to the ball. I think we, we kind of wait for it to come to us. And the only person attacking it is the defender. You know, in the box, you got you got to recognize it's usually one or two touch to score. Um, you don't have time to wait for the ball. You usually have to attack it. And... In this case, the defender does the right right thing by just going to it. You can't wait for it. You got to go to it. And I think Jack had an opportunity there to possibly get a shot on goal if he if he had attacked the ball. But still, I think the ball should be a little bit more to the back post because you know there's a better chance for us if he's recognizing that Billy would get on this ball instead of Jack. I think he's wide open. 
if he had just hit it to the back post. Um, but overall, good play. As you see, all of those sequences, uh, just real quick, is that we break pressure. Just jumping back to the beginning of it. We break pressure. We're look, one of us is looking long. I think Billy's looking short. Right? Rec recognizing that it's not on for us to dribble through the pressure. We play around it. And this is a good cut inside here. Just a little bit of ball. We pick up the pieces here. Once they win the ball, we're pressing. We're not letting them play. Billy's checking his shoulder, seeing the spaces. And now he's right away. He's looking for another good pass. He's seen is not just standing. He's working off the ball underneath it. Good combination play, right? Cam's in a good spot to pick up the ball now, and this is where, you know, just a little bit more quality in all three of those passes, you know, take one of them. We, we execute on one of them. It's a goal for us. Um, another attacking sequence for us, um, just to let it play. You see it, Garrett's checking his shoulder. One of the things I like about what how he plays is that, again, it's, it's one touch. He doesn't waste touches. And I think if you go back... This is how you get pressed, right? If we start off this play again, can we make, instead of using two, can we use one, Cam? Right, instead of stopping the ball and playing with your right, can we just play that ball first time? All right, if they had gone a little bit harder, he might have been able to steal that ball, or that player had worked a bit harder. And I think Garrett does the right thing here in playing a first time ball. Now, the ball that's from Tyler here, I think he's trying to hit Daniel, because Daniel's the one, is, I think, is making the run across the field. And it's really just a range thing. You know, eventually we'll be able to hit these balls. Um, as you can see, Daniel's running in behind. I, you know, I think Tyler has the leg to hit these balls, but maybe, you know, maybe that's something, he, you know, he'll have to add to his game. Raphael definitely do, does as well. Uh, does have the range. So I think this is a ball, a good ball into Yassine. But I think he was initially looking for, for Daniel. But we'll see. As we see that the ball works back to our four. Uh, through our forward, back to the midfielders, and it's it's a tough ball to handle, but we actually do a really good job of just improvising, which is excellent. You know, this pass slightly it almost gets there, right? I think it's a good idea to cut the ball back here, but the defenders in in the space. To me, it's you know, it's I'm being nitpicky here because I'm watching it slow mo. You probably want to work the ball to Ethan. But, you know, this is still a good pass if you can connect it. Because the defender isn't, isn't necessarily marking to, uh, Daniel. He might be offside, so I'm not sure. But it's a decent effort to try to get through. I think what I wanted to highlight is the play out of the back can be and might need to be, or probably need to be quicker. Right? Everyone should be looking to play one touch if we can to work the ball out. Because, you know, more effort from them, especially this player right here, more effort from them, that pass to Garrett isn't on. Right? This defender ran that distance by the time you trapped it. This defender could, this guy could have done the same exact thing and cut this pass off. And then all you would have had to done is maybe dribble back and maybe try to hit a ball with your right foot, or your weaker foot, to cross the field or try to find Raphael. So I think, you know, I, we want to take the example from Garrett in a lot of cases that he's looking to play one touch. He knows his options. He's seeing them. He's letting the ball roll there, and he plays one touch. Here, it's just a matter of range or the right type of ball. Now, if he's trying to play... You've seen it's a good ball to you've seen. Does a decent job of improvising, right? And we nearly get through. It's a very good combination play in the end. It just nearly gets through. The defender does a good job of covering the space. Um, and if I had to be nitpicky, you could probably you might have been able to play Ethan there instead. But you know, overall it's a good play from us. In this video, you'll see um, a number of such hacking sequences. Um, just run it, run it through here. We win the ball, do a good job of pressing. Good, good one touch play here. Again, I think that the ball from Tyler needs just to be a little bit more accurate because you know Yassine's into space here. It's really to nobody. I think he's trying to hit Yassine, but I think we need to be a little more accurate or play Billy there. We pick up the pieces though, right? That's you know part of the part of uh, playing direct or playing in, into spaces is to make sure um, you know that we we're able to win those knockdowns. We do. Decent play here. Right, it's not on to go around. And here we probably could play one touch a little bit. Uh, get the ball out faster from underneath, uh, out from your feet, you've seen. Uh, do a good job at least holding up and pinning the defender on. And good ball here. Unfortunately, it's deflected because Daniel's wide open in the box. All right, deflects here. It doesn't necessarily get to the back post, but good effort here to get the ball in the in the box in a dangerous area. And the good, we're good pressing. Um, 
to get the ball back here. We don't give up on the play. Everyone's, you know, working hard to get the ball back. And we do a good job of switching the point of attack once we win it. Um, Ethan and Tyler here do a good job of, of making sure they can't get out. Jack goes the right way um, and plays it out wide. Good one-touch ball from Daniel, knowing where the pressure is. And really, this is just another example of the service has to be deeper into the box. Um, we have numbers. We have players. You know, you can see a seat asking for the ball into space. And this is just too soft of the ball to be played um, into the box. And so they, they attack here for a little bit. We win the ball. And, you know, good building out of the back again. Here's one of those situations where we just need to be able to play quicker. It shouldn't take three touches to do what this this pass. It should be one touch. Uh, you see the pressure coming. You know, prepare for it. And it's just a simple ball across the field. It's just a one-touch ball to Rafael or, or to Garrett um, to get us out of pressure. But it takes us three touches to do it. And in that instance, you get hit. Um, and, you know, you could lose the ball. Good play by Rafael to get the ball wide. Decent ball into space. At least it's something that puts them under pressure and they have to clear the ball out of bounds. Um, and I'll fast forward a little bit here. And you'll see, again, once we work the ball wide, this is where we need to set up to work the ball around them. And I think, you know, you'll see another example of where we try to play into this same, the side that we're on, and that doesn't help, right? It doesn't able to get us out, right? We're, we're, we're going right back into their pressure. And we're not able to really do much with the ball when we could have played around. So you can just rewind it. You know, we're in a wide zone, unless we're getting a cross off immediately. So we get the ball back to Daniel and we cross it immediately. Um, to me, I think we're set up better if we can work the ball to Garrett, Garrett to Tyler or Ethan. Um, the space for us is to attack around them. All right, you can see how they're set up. I think even Jack could probably could pull out of there. If we So if we did want to play here 1v1 or 2v2, Jack can't be here. He can't bring another defender into this space because now... It, if he does beat a player, if Daniel does beat a player, his, his defenders are there to cover. So it's too tight, right? We need better spacing if we are going to attack this this side because he is facing up and probably could take a player on, but it's just too tight for him. Sorry, it's too tight for him to get in um, to take anybody on. It's, the space is not there for us. So when he does beat the first player, but the second player is there to you know to to cover. And I think you know the principle for me is to work the ball around, away from the pressure, read the pressure, and move it around it, but if we do decide to isolate and go 1v1, which is a situation we can, the players who are around it must recognize that situation, pull away, pull their defenders away. So for me, Jack could be out in this zone, set up for the our umbrella, right? Being able to, to pull his defender out, and that would give enough space for uh, Daniel to take his player on 1v1. But in this case, you got to recognize that it isn't on um, and work the ball around um, to the other side of the field because I think we're set up for a good attack on the weak side. On uh, this example, we'll see a good passing sequence where we nearly score. Good play here across the field. Get caught on the ball here. I think Jack needs to do a better job of just seeing the pressure. Right? He's looking forward, doesn't necessarily see that back pressure, which is tough to do as a midfielder, but we got to play quickly and have an option on a first touch. Um, win the ball back in a good spot. Great one-two play here. Get the ball wide. It's exactly what we're looking for. And great service here. And, ne and nearly get on the end of it um, on Yassine's cross, on the cross by Tyler to Yassine. So again, you know, key moment here, picking up the ball, working across the field. Again, one of the, er the things we do often is working across the field. This time we're looking to give and go. We're, we have good numbers underneath it, you know, and recognizing this, the play here. Tyler's recognizing the space that's available to us. Um, it's good combination play, one touch in the space, good ball, perfectly weighted, and a good cross deep into the box for them to have to deal with that we nearly get on the end of it. Here's an example of uh, another combination play where we're working across the field and we find the weak side runner. Uh, I'm going to let it play. Good defensive pressure here, forcing them to the sideways and backwards. Yassine does a good job of coming back to put pressure, which is hard for midfielders to really read. Jack realizes, you know, he can work across the field here, which is great. And then the space is recognized. You can see him pointing and running. Daniel is recognizing the space. And it's a decent ball into space here. We just need to turn ourselves and try to try to play the flick. It's a little bit behind Daniel. I can understand why he might think he needs to do this. but And he sees he's seen running in behind, you know, running off of it. But to me, he just lets that ball run. 
I'm sure you looked at this before, but just let the ball run and shoot it yourself and you would have a goal. But really the key moment here is, you know, the decision by Jack to cut the ball across the field. And again, we have a common pattern that we're, we're seeing often in our play is that we can get in behind teams with the right weighted pass. It's a little, you know, it's a little short. I think we could probably hit it a little bit harder and a little bit more in, uh, in front of Daniel, but I, it's good enough in this case. I think he could have just let the ball, dummy the ball there and just turn and go at goal, seal the defender off and just tap it in. So once again, just looking at the common patterns that, we, that we've identified and seeing we can just execute a little bit better here, Daniel just needs to be a bit more selfish and take it himself. In this clip, you just see some defensive issues that we ran into in this particular play and leads to a, you know, a shot on goal, which you know Tony makes a heck of a say. First thing, we, we know, and all of us know, we can't let the ball bounce on these type of plays. Right? The ball gets cleared, somebody needs to challenge for it and get it out. And, and it results with, you know, us not reacting to the mistake. I think we could do a better job of, of once the ball does bounce, of, of finding a pass, you know, not panicking in the situation um, and getting up and heading the ball clear. It's a tough thing when you don't attack the initial ball. Um, but Garrett needs to work back into a space that can win the ball. Um, we don't, their best player basically, you know, picks up the ball, is able to go on a bit of a run, and we don't have enough tacklers, right? Not enough effort here by Garrett. To win the ball, really no effort. You know, he doesn't stick a foot in to to really get the ball. Same with Raphael here. Not much of a of a challenge. It's kind of a half toe poke challenge by Jake. No one's really putting in a strong tackle to slow this player down. He's on a run. He's getting ahead of steam. Um, do just enough to really dispossess him, but not enough really to, to stop the play. And the ball comes back, and I mean, inches wider, and this is in the goal. I mean, Tony makes a heck of a, a reaction save here. Um, don't have enough players on the on the ball that is being played, and it goes off our post actually. And luckily for us, they don't score. And at this point, it's I think it's two one. Um, and we're trying. We know this is a game we must win, and this type of defending isn't going to cut it um, in the long term. We need to do a better job of tackling, or well, winning the first ball to begin with, right all the way back to the beginning. We can't let that first ball bounce. Somebody needs to. Rafael in this case needs to go up and head the ball. Uh, Cam Tyler. And uh, Jake need to drop in behind. Garrett needs to be in position to try, try to win that first uh, the, the knockdown, and then we you know safely clear the ball out. But because of it, you know we're they're able to pick up the pieces this time, which is what we want to do on our long balls. You know, so the opposite is true. We can't let them pick up the second balls and run out our back line. And when they do, we just got to put in a better tackle. This is not good enough defending, right? Little toe poke there is not enough to win the ball. Um, players aren't are ball watching in this case aren't seeing that there's open players in the box. Um, Cam does a good job here, at least of trying to get to the ball, even though he's a little late, you know, and they get a good shot on goal. And, and fortunately for us, Tony's able to make a good, good uh, reaction save and they aren't able to get the follow up. So just highlighting some of the defensive issues that we had on that play um, and seeing if we can clean that up in the future. In this video, it's just a small example again of, of you know, our midfielders possibly playing with less touches, um, an example Examples of, of situations where we can play one touch and still get out in the same fashion that we are, you know, using dribbling, we can use passing to get out and move the ball much quicker than we are. So as you see this sequence go, we win the ball. Uh, goodbye, Cam, to, to put pressure on it. You know, right here is an opportunity. You know, you would think possibly, you know, to, to Cruyff with your left foot and maybe turn upfield, but he also has Ethan available and Ethan has Garrett you'll see later on pop in this space there's no one in this space right here and Garrett could easily get the ball and we can advance the ball you know to Tyler here very quickly or at least attack the other half of the field quickly if we just one touch pass one touch pass and we know our next passes you know Jack does try turning upfield and, and does a good job of of going forward and then coming backwards he sells the defender on that he's going to go backward uh, forward and then he comes back but to me the same type of play could have been made um, the ball could have gotten to the same area of the field if you just given it to Ethan, Ethan out to the other side of the field. Uh, so this, this is another example where we can just get one touch passing. So he's looking up here. This is a tough play. Once he does get in this situation, what I would love, he can see Billy right there. He's actually looking at him is if he could just dip a ball and just slip a ball into his feet from this angle while he's running. It's a tough pass to make. Um, he has to kind of do it on, you know, on the run and kind of cut the ball back, but it's, it's there for him to do this. You know, the defender does a good job of kind of recovering. Garrett is, again, still in this position. And what you see here is that Ethan is looking after as the ball is coming to him. Right? You don't see much of a look now. 
to see what his next pass is. He could possibly hear slip a pass into Billy uh, one time, or he could pass the ball back into Garrett, which is on for him. And it's not until the ball is rolling that you see him look. And at that point in time, it's just it's so fast and it's hard to really see anything while the ball because you're focused on the ball and the pressure. And all you had is a small little glance. It's really tough to see any passes. And, and now this time the space for you know for him to play into is probably closed off. So really the only option is uh, to play Garrett. But again, we take touches. We go backwards. I don't know if Garrett's talking enough there in that situation. Maybe that's what the case. You know what could be the case. Uh, the issue here is that you know he's not demanding the ball enough. But you know players also have to have good vision. But again, the players on off the ball can definitely help. But that's a one touch bash to Garrett. Garrett can work the ball out, and, and he sees the field more than anybody else. He can find a bunch of players in this situation. Um, we end up working the ball wide. Not much on here. Again. There might have been a slight chance if we had just played on the first touch into Jack. Maybe he can turn in there or maybe into Yassin um, if he's checking. Billy's working the, the wide angle here. We work across the field, which is fine. And, and I, this is what I'm looking for, right? He can see the field. He knows his option, Garrett, in this situation. And he's, he's looking to play first time. And I think a lot of players can, can you know, feed off of that or you know, replicate that type of play because it's on for us to play quickly. Um, nothing much comes of it, but we put them under pressure and win a ball in their area or throw it in there and deep in their area. It's just kind of just rewinding real quick. And you'll see a number of times when we play or when we're when in the video where the ball is played to Garrett and he's not looking to do anything besides playing one touch. Several times in the game, um, you'll see in all the games, you'll see that he, he uh, is looking to play one touch. And I think our other midfielders, our other players as well, need to think in that vein, play with one less touch than you think you need, right? If you need, you think you need two, try to do it in one. Um, if you need three, try to do it in two. And, and, and I, you can see a number of examples where we can play much quicker if we're just thinking a little bit faster and playing the way we're facing and, and giving the ball up to the next guy who could see the field better. Uh, this is just another example of a good sequence of, of, of attacks that we have. Um, and I'll just let it play through, just highlighting a couple of different things. Quick free kick. You know, deciding not to launch it forward. I like, I like the fact that we're keeping the ball. Um, again, G Garrett dropping into space. He probably doesn't necessarily do it, need to do it this time, but I, I like the fact that he's you know getting used to dropping, allowing Rafael to take the space and moving out of the way. And, that's, and that has to happen when Rafael or Jake dribbles the ball. Good first time ball into space by Garrett again. Just another example of you know what his thinking is like when the ball comes to him. He's not taking extra touches and he doesn't need it. Um, I think we just need to do a better job of being more accurate out of the back. There's a number of balls being played by our backs, all four backs, and all, and you know, and every every player that plays in these positions that could just be a little bit more accurate. We're either finding feet or chest or somebody's head, or we're playing the ball into space. And this is kind of half between actually getting to Yassine and and uh, playing a ball into space. We end up picking up, you know, forcing them to play a ball out out of bounds and keep the possession. Decent, you know, throw in. We're, we're trying to press them, uh, force it into the corner. Good ball into the box, right? We don't, this is the exact same play from FC Monco. Instead of Yassine trying to take the player on by himself, he works the ball back to a player who's, who can see the field better than he can. And this is this type of ball is a very good ball. It doesn't necessarily beat the defender, but it puts pressure on them. Um, and you can see how they're set up. They're set up with, you know, four defenders against the four players here. And in the box where it's supposed to be dangerous, where they need, they need the most cover, it's 1v1. And that's what we want to recognize that the, the players behind the play, when you work the ball into a wide zone, we need to work the ball back and around if we have to, or back and each segment that we, each pass that we make, we're looking to serve a ball in the box or penetrate it on a give and go. So in this case, we serve the ball in the box. You know, I first glance, I was think I thought to myself, Daniel should be challenging for this ball. You know, as a tendency of a forward to sometimes think that, they're going to miss, and that, and that sometimes happens as well. But I think being aggressive, I've seen a number of plays where he could be more aggressive uh, instead of trying to, to, to play the knockdown or play the mistake, just trying to make a mistake, trying to, to force an issue. Because in this case, he I don't think he realizes it, but what could have happened is that Cam or, or Dean or whoever's playing in the outside behind him, or you know even in this case, Ethan, is running, and a challenge by him might put the ball off of the defender and go to them. And so this is one of those situations where I think he could take a chance here and just try to win the ball. Now, in this case, there's no one really on the back post, but imagine if there was, you know, 
you would want a challenge for this ball. The attitude should be that you should be trying to challenge the ball. Make it hard for the defender to get it out. Um, and maybe the ball drops in here for somebody to pick up or somebody uh, you know, in behind him or he himself gets on the head ball and beats the defender. He's taller than this kid. He can just run onto it. And I think he's in a good spot you know, when this ball comes in, he, but I think he's reading the defender's going to miss it. He, the defender doesn't miss it. Um, they're able to clear their lines. Good first-time ball, and I think, again, this is one of those plays where in, out, we're out the other side, but Cam decides to take an extra touch, gets pressed. I think, all again, a good example of can we play in that in less touches? Rafael does a good job of finding Cam. Cam can clearly see Garrett, and you know if Garrett needs to be yelling or, or you know to get this ball, that's one thing. But I think all, you know he's in a good position. He's not. He's able to see uh, Garrett. Just give it to him. He's the one that can see the field. Usually, if you play the way you're facing and you play in one touch, it's a good pass. So it's something we have to get in the habit of. You get pressed. Here, Cam gets pressed here. And we lose the ball. Um, and they're on a counterattack somewhat. And, you know, this is somewhat of a dangerous ball, but we end up dealing with it. And a great ball by Tony here to put the ball into space. Um, the pre you know, the ball's not on for us to play. And, again, you'll see an example here, just one-touch passing. Get the ball to the player who's open. Let them do the work. And, again, I you know, the ball's going to ease, and the difference here is he's looking to turn. It's not a bad place to turn. He's, a, he's an attacking midfielder. I want him to do stuff like, stuff like this. Um, and it's a good ball. I just take extra touches there. You know, two touches at maximum. He doesn't need to run with the ball. Good turn here by Daniel. You know, the difference between here and the Monco game when he did this dummy move is that he's not a midfielder, first of all, and he's not at our half field. So, that, you know, this is where you want to take these type of risks. I think we're, you know, if he did lose the ball, we have enough players and enough distance to recover that we can get behind, and it's a good play. And as soon as he cuts back here, this is this is where I think we worked on a little bit, you know, today where the secondary runs could 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 be used here. The balls to the secondary player, in this case, Tyler running into space. Billy's also on, um, and you kind of see me gesture that you can possibly play this ball, and you can see me, you know, guessing at what he's looking at. Uh, I think he does a great job of cutting inside, and this is an example of what we should be looking for as we do that. Um, Jack's making a run into the space in behind. You can see the space here. Yassine is working short. He almost always does. We can we can now expect that as something um, that he will do. So does Jet. He likes to work nearest to the ball, and he draws players. There are tent. There are good runners off the ball, and they're loud and they're active constantly. So defenders will follow them. Um, and a player who's good on the ball needs cover. So you know, in this situation, we have to know our strengths. Daniel's you know good at dribbling. Billy's good at dribbling. He's going to draw attention. He's going to draw the, the second defender with him. He's not. They're not going to leave him alone. So when he does break pressure, right? This player is one v one. He has to track. Typically speaking, this player should pinch in, and the forward should help out. But most forwards don't want to defend. So we know the tendency here is that there's going to be a gap because they're not that great at covering space. Uh, most of the defenders. There's spaces for us to run in here, or space for Jack to run into here, for Billy to run into here, and for Tyler. And you can see it's on for us, that split second. You know, he probably got put off a little bit by maybe the other defender. Didn't have enough time to, this defender here, didn't have enough time to serve a ball. But I think the attitude is, once I cut this ball back, I'm looking to switch point of back immediately. So it takes probably three or four touches here where he could probably play. You could even slip a ball in here to Cam. Cam's making a good run underneath it because his defender is pulled off of him and actually gone to defend Daniel. And here's a good pass. I didn't, you know, I didn't look at the, I didn't notice that the first time, but here's another good pass that could be made for Cam to run on to the ball and then look to switch the point of attack. We end up going back, much to my dismay, um, serve a ball and it gets us a corner. So at least we got something out of it, which is you know positive. Um, we get a corner out of this, but I think there was opportunity, definitely opportunity for us to attack the weak side as we cut in. What we see in this clip is a perfect example of why we do film study. Uh, in the in the previous film study, we, we talked about what to do on a, on a wide free kick when the, the defense doesn't put a player in the, the near space. And as you watch this clip, you'll see Daniel notice it, turn to me and, and, and talk about it, and basically execute on exactly what we were, we had discussed in in film studies. So you can see him here talking to me. And typically speaking, you want to have somebody in this range right here, in this area right here, to prevent just a simple either shot on goal or a, a ball that just passed into the area. Um, and when we were in film study, we discussed 
what happened to us actually in the, in our last National League game or in our National League game last December um, against the Georgia team. They 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 played a short ball. We never had anybody in the space, and they played a short ball into the space, and the guy was able to tap the ball in the net really easily. Um, and so in this case, Daniel notices it um, and is able to capitalize it with a good ball into space that that Garrett could score. In the end, it's a, it's a great finish um, and a good ball. And again, if somebody's standing in that gap, Daniel would have to hit a, a tougher ball in the air to the back post as opposed to being able to basically play it at head height or chest height into that area um, to score. And so this is a, a good example of what you can get out of watching your film. You notice certain tendencies that defenses has or a certain play that we like to do, and you can pick up on those things and remember them in the games and u- utilize them to uh, to – to create better op- opportunities for us, for our team, or recognize a defensive situation that we might be able to cover. And that's the reason why we do these, we these film studies, so we can learn um, and see the, a bigger picture, something you can't see while you're playing. This is actually, I think, the ensuing corner uh, from that last play. Um, and I really just wanted to highlight the technique that's needed to score these goals. I think it's a good service, one of our better services into the box. Um, and you see gets up and should head the ball down, but technique is all wrong. There's n- really no chance for him to get this ball down because of the how he's jumping. I just wanted to highlight the technique. If you're jumping as a defender, you want to jump into the ball. So at this point in time, he should be rising already up into the air to be able to head this because he needs to get above the ball to be able to head it down. Um, and as we watch it, it's, it's as if he's def- defending this ball. Right, because he's jumping into it as the, he's not r- off the ground until basically it's at him. He's not. He's still on the ground right now, and it's right above his head. So the best he can get on it is get underneath the ball. Um, the technique here has you have to rise above. You have to jump earlier than the ball before the ball gets to you, so that you can be meet it at its highest point. But your your head is above it, right? So you can head snap the the ball down. In this case. He heads it like a defender. A defender needs to jump into the ball, which is the reason why it's easier to head the ball out because you can jump, you know, late and basically jump into the ball. Um, and there's no chance, right? The ball you're underneath the ball. The ball is going to go up no matter what because your your momentum's taking you up. It's really hard to get this ball to go down unless you barely nick it and you know flick it on um, to the back post. But he's jumping so hard that it goes way over, as you can see. So I just wanted to highlight the tech, the proper technique. Um, you can watch some of our old, uh, other goals where we do score off of a header, um, you know, like maybe Garrett's or um, uh, against Loudon. I don't know if he had to jump for that one, but this in this case, you got to jump early and meet the ball. So you probably should be jumping right around now and getting up so that when the ball does get to this point, you're already around here. And so you can just so you can snap your header or direct the ball towards goal. Um, another good sequence of passing, and we win the ball. Um, and I'll just let it play out. Good switch of point of attack. Win the ball here from it on the throw in. Do a, good, do a decent job of getting out of the pressure and going the other direction. Good first time ball by Jack. I love that. That's a good vision. Both players are running in the ball, and this is definitely a PK for me. Same type of play. Um, that Tyler got scored, uh, that called for the player, you know, the player trips, you know, awkwardly is losing his balance, but makes contact with our player. I mean, and you see, and takes him down, you know, very similar, um, to the first, first, uh, pen- the penalty that they received. Um, so I think it was a bad call, but what I wanted to highlight is just what, what to do when we win the ball, you know, we probably should have done a better job with our throwing, we already not throw it to them, but we win, pick up the pieces, we switch a point of attack. Players are playing quickly. One, two touch, one touch into space. You can see even Ethan here is directing the play, which is great, right? We're communicating. You can see him pointing right around here. He's saying, there's a, you know, even Garrett is telling him, put the ball in the space. That's where you need to attack. And, and good recognition by Dean here to read the switch. That's usually when you want to attack as an outside back, is as the ball's coming to your side of the field, you recognize where, you know, is, is the forward pinched in? In this case, Daniel is pinched in. He's drawing his defender inside. Let's take our chances here and, and get forward and see if your your, your forward can track you. Um, you see, it also runs into space here, so it doesn't necessarily get to Dean. But uh, you know, both players are basically good positioned, 
he pro he could have maybe you know if he wanted to be really cheeky here is to to, to heal the ball back to Dean and and uh, let Dean run in on goal, but he decides to take it himself, um, and I think draws the penalty, um, but the referee doesn't call it. That's right after the, that peak miss. PK call, you know, we score our goal, and, and it really is just defense to, to offense that creates this, um, and I'll let it play through, so they have a goal kick, we went up, pick up the pieces here, decent, decent effort here, but I think, you know, probably being a little bit too cute with this type of back heel, I don't think it's on for us, but what we do is we win the ball back immediately, look, the pressure is quick, players are harassing, players are in good spots, and, you know, we pick up the pieces from there. Decent ball, into, you know, good ball from Brendan on a first-time pass. He, you know, we win the ball, and his head's immediately up looking for space to play into, and he sees he's seen here. Good layoff or turn. The, you know, the defender actually posts this ball, um, and Garrett, again, playing on one touch. It's, co it's common for him to do that, and, he, and Billy fights off the pressure and, and scores the goal. It's great effort, you know, individual effort, but really what I wanted to highlight um, is the attitude of our team you know, throughout this entire half, actually, but in this particular play, the ball is lost on a you know an errant pass or you know unforced error. But every player is after it quickly, not letting them get out of the area, and then we quickly are able to get our head up. And players who are behind the ball are quickly you know able to get their head up and find a find feet in space. The scene does a decent job here. Probably could have laid off to Billy. Would have been a little bit of a tough ball, but you know a little bit of cheeky back heel here it just into this little space right here and billy could have taken this in on goal because you can see how spread out their backs are i think that's what billy's seeing uh it doesn't come off the defender does a good job but you know kudos to, again to garrett for seeing the opportunities with one pass you know he could have played daniel here possibly if he saw that but he sees a sl he slips a pass into billy and it's really just individual strength and effort here by billy to you know to get past his defender and which is what we needed right to win this game and this is our third goal and we win the game here on that play so right after you know a blown pk call by the referee you know we were basically not giving up we're still pushing um but the individual effort here by billy you know obviously to win that is great and then obviously the vision here by garrett to play a first time ball and a good perfectly weighted ball into space and overall effort by the team to win the ball back immediately after losing it is what creates this goal for us it's constant pressure we're never letting down Um, this clip is about you know 30 seconds left in the game or a minute left in the game. Um, they get a good chance on goal, so I just want to highlight some of the issues we had defensively um, on this play. First, we have to recognize that you know it's late in the game. We need this win, so we need better pressure on the ball. Right? The effort here by you know by Eric is at half speed. I think he could do a better job of making it harder for this player to find passes. The second thing is that no one is picking up players in the midfield. Right? You can see. Um, as this ball goes here to the wide, the left back, you know, Ethan isn't really knowing where this player is. Jake isn't really doing a good job of, of communicating, and he's wide open basically for a pass. Now, the ball doesn't actually get to him, and we do a poor job here of clearing the ball, which is, you know, if I had, you know, to name some of the small issues that we had defensively, it's, it's clearances, making sure that we get the ball clear. A lot of times the ball, we're indecisive about what type of ball we want to clear, uh, or how we want to clear the ball. And it ends up dropping to another player, to one of their players. So in this case, we were kind of in between deciding, should I kick this out or should I head it? I'm not exactly sure what we were thinking, what part of the body to use. It bounces off your chest and they're able to pick it up. One of the, one of the better players. Um, again, it's not, you know, this is being a little bit nitpicky, but as we do, we do win the ball here briefly, and I think the tendency for players to dribble is what, you know, caught, uh, uh, it causes us to lose the ball here. Um, we're trying to dribble out instead of play out. They're able to pick up the pieces. And again, recognizing the danger. Our forwards on our end, you know, the same as theirs, don't like to defend as much. Um, the tendency is to stay forward. But you can see that, you know, Mike's probably not recognizing the danger here early enough. Somebody is, you know, somebody needs to tell, as Dean pinches in, Mike needs to come back into this position. We're a minute and a half or so left in the game. We need to win this game. So in this case, you're not necessarily a wing forward, right? Eric and Mike uh, are much more of like, a, you know, four, a five in the midfield instead of a three. So you're being a little bit more conservative. And, and in this case, you know, probably shouldn't try to dribble out here. 
you know, maybe I'm not sure what other options you might be able to lay a ball back to Tony if you had an, if you saw it um, or ask Rafael, you know, to give it to Rafael and he can clear it. But we try to turn out wide, which isn't, you know, that's t the tendency is to get the ball wide, which is fine by me. Um, but this he should score that. I mean, that's that that is game tying, in which case we would have been out of this tournament uh, because we just weren't recognizing the danger early enough. So just a number of things. I think what I want to highlight here is just understanding the game situation. Right. As subs, sometimes, you know, this is one of the tougher things about being a sub is that you don't necessarily get to play the game that you might have wanted to play coming into it. Right. A lot of times players have an idea of what they want to do, work on, um, try. They've been training on certain things. Um, and as our as forwards, you know, your tendency is I want to get forward. I want to score goals. And I and I was the same way. But being a sub part of the, the role of being a sub is that you come in and do what is what is necessary to either close a game out or if we're behind to try to, to score us a goal um, in this case and in the game against sta you'll see another example um, where i think the, the the forwards aren't recognizing what is needed in this moment um, and in, in general everybody isn't recognizing what is needed in this moment um, and what we you know our style of play and what and our and, and our effort should be defensively first and then looking to maybe get forward if we can and keep possession. So again, just running through it, you know, can the effort be better here? I definitely, I've seen Eric sprint and and, and uh, chase balls back into the midfield. This is what is expected. I think, you know, Abel's probably way too high here. He should be dropping into this space to mark these players. Mike, again, should be back here in this space. We should be at a 4-5-1. Jet's probably the only player that should be high um, to prevent any issues. Dean can't let his player get in behind, in, in the in between him and his defender or in, be, between him and Raphael he's got to be goal side near side and ball side so he should be in this space you know the range of this player's service could be this far right we don't know he hasn't necessarily hit too many long balls or at least any examples but you don't know his range you could possibly hit this ball in behind and as you get older they will hit this ball um so we need to drop in behind I think you know Garrett's in a decent spot but he probably could affect the play a little bit better if he's over here and then Ethan it's got to recognize this. These two players have to recognize it. And as this ball comes in, I think if we do a better job of players being in position, we might be able to clean this ball ball up. But Rafael needs to do better in that situation. Um, we do a good job of at least getting back on the play. I don't think that's a good challenge by Jake necessarily. You know, the, the player doesn't do much to, to really sell you. But Ethan's there to help out. You know, he loses the ball in a dangerous spot. And because we're having to scramble here, and not in a good position to begin with, right? You're you're basically you see the forwards not recovering first. They're kind of waiting to see if the ball is going to get a turnover. Now we're having to scramble, and the player is able to get a shot on goal, a good shot on goal. Um, fortunately for us, he missed. But again, this is the difference between winning this tournament could have been this play. And as a sub, and I know it's difficult to understand, but as a sub, that's part of the role is to understand what is needed at the time um, and execute possibly you know if we're up a goal and need to win the game you're going to be more conservative you're just going to sit in a little bit more you're going to help out your your backs um you're going to pressure from behind you're going to do all the dirty work that's required and if you get a chance to get forward and score your goals that's what you, you, you'll do as well um and in this situation and against sda you'll see the effort the understanding and the effort isn't there when it's needed 